The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Do your taste buds sometimes go to sleep? Do you get that hunger for something that's just a little tastier and more exciting? Then try sharpening up your menu with Pabstet, the pasteurized processed cheese food that has that real cheddar flavor. You can get golden or pimento Pabstet in a round, handy-sized package. But once you've tried Pabstet, you'll want to buy the economical two-pound loaf. Remember, it's the pasteurized processed cheese food with that real cheddar flavor. Get Pabstet for delicately different cheddar goodness. Now let's see what's going on in Summerfield. A couple of weeks ago, the great Gildersleeve was introduced to his niece Marjorie's future in-laws, Mr. and Mrs. Thompson. It wasn't exactly love at first sight. Ah, that Mrs. Thompson. I never trust a woman who wears glasses on a chain. (laughs) Lights on in the living room. Marjorie must have company. Probably Bronco Thompson. Uh, I'll be glad when they get married. And I can have the living room back again. (laughs) Uh, Of course, I'll have Bronco's mother, too. (laughs) Can't win. (laughs) Hey, Unc. Leroy, what are you doing hiding out here in the bushes? I'm making money. Bronco gave me a quarter to stay out of the living room. They're talking in there. Oh? You can see them through the porch railing. I don't want to look, Leroy. Where can you see them? (laughs) Right here. They're sitting by the fire. All they do is talk, talk, talk. What do they talk about? Never mind. Get your bicycle off the front walk and put it in the garage. Okay. Okay. Get on, Unc. I'll push you down the driveway. No, thank you. I'll carry in the garbage can. (laughs) Wonder what Bronco and Marjorie are talking about. Oh, Bronco, I'm so happy. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Just think, Marge, we're going to be able to sit together and look at the fire all the rest of our lives. Uh Uh-huh. Only one thing bothers me, Marge. What is it, Bronco? Does Mr. Gildersleeve like my mother and father? Well, of course he does. Well, we promised each other, Marge, that we'd tell each other everything, and I intend to keep my promise. But... I'm going to speak the truth. I'm worried. About what? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve came over to our house and met my mother and father, and that was the end. The end? Marge, my mother's wondering why he hasn't invited them over to your house. There. I said it. Bronco, I know that Unky... Well, he just hasn't thought about it. Well, you know how mothers are. They're funny about those things. Well, I know Uncle Mort would love to have them over if he knew they'd like to come. Hello, children. Oh, hello, Unky. Oh, good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, a nice fire. How are you, Bronco? Oh, just fine. My mother and father are fine, too. Oh, Well, good, good. I I was just thinking, Unky, you haven't seen Mr. and Mrs. Thompson since we went to dinner at their house. Uh, no. Guess your folks don't get into Summerfield very often, Bronco. (laughs) Oh, they'd come in any time if they had some place to come to, Mr. Gildersleeve. (laughs) Well, there's a lot of interesting spots in Summerfield. We have a fine library, lots of books, a zoo. The park is nice, too, in the summer. (laughs) Uncle Mort, Bronco means they'd come in if they had an invitation. Oh, well, they can always come in and see us anytime, anytime at all. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I hope you'll forgive me, but how about Tuesday? Tuesday? Well, uh, I think I'd better check my calendar, Bronco. Uh, Let's see. What do I do on Tuesday night? You read the paper, listen to Fibber McGee and Molly, and go to bed. (laughs) I'll tell you what I'll do, Bronco I'll phone your mother tomorrow And we'll make a definite date Oh, fine, Mr. Gildersleeve That'll be dandy Yeah (laughs) Just peachy Coming, 
morning, Bertie. Don't have to blow the plaster down off the ceiling. Hi, Unc. Uh, good morning, Leroy. Good morning, Uncle Mort. Here's the telephone. It, what? The Thompson's number is Broadmoor 663. Oh, for Marjorie, I can't call Mrs. Thompson on an empty stomach. No, you've got to use a telephone. <laughs> Uncle Mort, you promised Bronco you'd call his mother this morning and make a date for him to come over, and now you're not going to get out of it. Are they coming over here? Well, they most certainly are. Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> Marjorie, the Thompsons aren't even out of bed yet. I can't invite them over to dinner before breakfast. Well, they've had breakfast. Mrs. Thompson gets the family up at 6.30. Yeah, she would. <laughs> breakfast is at 7. She uh, washes the dishes at 7.30. Beds are made at a quarter of 8, and by 8 o'clock she has the housework done. It's now a quarter after 8. Well, I can't call her now. I might get her right in the middle of lunch. Uncle <laughs> <laughs> Lord? Eh? All right, give me the telephone. Hello? Hello, is this Mrs. Thompson? Yes, it is. Well, guess who this is? Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Thompson. And I was telling Bronco last night I'd like to have you folks come over some evening and have dinner with us. Thank you. Edward and I will be very happy to come. Well, good. How about Friday? No, I don't think we can possibly come Friday. You can't? Well, that's too bad. <laughs> We're all looking forward to seeing you. But that's the way things go. Better luck next time. <laughs> we could make it for Saturday night. Saturday? Zeke. Beg your pardon? Uh, I mean, great, great. Saturday is fine. Saturday evening. Very well, and thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thank you. See you Saturday. Ta-ta, Mrs. Thompson. Ta-ta, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> oh, Edward. Oh, uh, yes, my dear. We're having dinner with Mr. Gildersleeve Saturday. Who's Gildersleeve? Marjorie's uncle. Oh, yes. What about him? We are having dinner with him. Oh. Martha, wouldn't you rather go to a good movie? No, Edward. It's the correct thing to do. I feel we owe it to our Bronco to find out all we can about Marjorie's family. Why go to dinner? Do we have to find out what they eat? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve invited us to dinner. And it's proper that we go. I want to show Mr. Gildersleeve that we observe correct social behavior. Uh, sounds like an uproarious evening. <laughs> Bertie! Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, Bertie has a lot to do. You better get a pencil. Yes, sir. Why don't you write these things down, Bertie? I'm having Mr. and Mrs. Thompson over Saturday for dinner and the evening. Going to be extra special. Yes, sir. I'm ready. What's going to happen? Well, first of all, we'll have dinner. Shall I write that down? Yeah, mm. <laughs> no, Bertie. We always have dinner. I want you to write down what we're going to have for dinner. How about a nice standing rib roast? All right. I got it. Now, let's see. Uh, you take it from there, Bertie. Fix up the best dinner you ever cooked. Outdo yourself. Mm. I'll do myself. I'll write that down. <laughs> Taking dictation? Yeah, no, my boy. I'm getting things organized for the Thompson dinner Saturday night. You're in on this, too, you know. What can I do? I'm just a little kid. <laughs> Leroy, everybody has to pitch in. Our dinner will be at 6 o'clock sharp, real deluxe. We're going to have finger bowls, three forks, and separate plates for the salad. Du jour. Yeah. After dinner at 7 o'clock, we'll move into the library for the demi tasse. Well, the what? <laughs> Coffee, Leroy, in little cups. Better find some little cups, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'll write that down. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't got a library. Well, that's an expression people use. Now, we'll go into the living room. It's sort of a library. We have some books there by the fireplace. Hi, Yankee. What's all the huddle about? Uh, hello, my dear. I'm making plans for Saturday night. It's going to be a big affair, everything the best. Oh, Anki, I hope you're not going to a lot of trouble. Let's just have a simple dinner the way we always do. Simple dinner? I should say not. Mrs. Thompson is coming to look us over. And by George, we're going to give her an eyeful. Right in her gold rim bifocals. <laughs> just wait. Yes, sir. I'll write that down. <laughs> Thank you.
The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Here's a way to make a homey dish and do a treat for a king. It's only sliced hard-boiled eggs on buttered toast until you cover each serving with Pabstet cheese food melted into a smooth golden sauce. Then it's eggs Pabstet. Serve with soup and salad and you have a company dinner in a jiffy or a royal family meal that's quick to get, easy on the budget. Yes, that's one thing that's wonderful about wholesome, delicious Pabstet. It has so many uses. Spreads easily at room temperature for sandwiches and cracker snacks. Cuts into firm wedges when chilled for salads and cheese plates. Melts smoothly into tempting sauces for rarebits, vegetables au gratin, casserole dishes. And any way you use it, spread, sliced, or melted, it's delicious. For Pabstet's delicately different flavor comes from genuine aged cheddar cheese of real distinction. Next time you shop, Get the mild cheese food with the real cheddar flavor. Get Pabstet in the round package. Or better still, save money by buying the economical two-pound loaf. Well, this is the day the great Gildersleeve entertains his niece's prospective in-laws at dinner. And no host has ever prepared for an important occasion with more elaborate care. Hi, Uncle. Where you been? Is this going to be an interview, Leroy? Downtown. Where's Marjorie? She went to the beauty parlor. She's getting a complete overhaul. <laughs> What'd you bring home, Monk? This is a book, my boy. A very interesting book called Etiquette by Emily Post. What is it, a mystery story? <laughs> Probably a mystery to you, my boy. This is a complete guide to good manners for the entire family. We've got to be on our toes, Leroy. You, Bertie, and all of us. This may be a rough night. Aw, uh, there's no use in a little kid sitting around here after dinner. Can I go over to Piggy's house? No, Leroy. We don't go off and leave our guests, no matter how much we'd like to. But, Unc... I'm going to need you here tonight, my boy. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. When we have coffee in the living room, I thought you might build a big fire in the fireplace. Oh, boy! Yeah. Then I might call on you to play a piece on the piano. Oh, brother. <laughs> Leroy, you know how hard it is to talk to the Thompsons. We may even show home movies. Yeah? What with? Yeah. Well, go over this afternoon and borrow Judge Hooker's projector. Keen, Unc. You gonna rent a Hopalong Cassidy film? Yeah, well, no. I'm gonna show the movies I took last summer of the Ridge Falls Waterworks. <laughs> Run along, Leroy. Wanna see what Emily Post says. I know what's correct. It won't do any harm to double check. Now, let's see what's correct. Invitations and regrets. Wish the Thompsons would send regrets. <laughs> Balls and dances. Preparations for weddings. Hey, this book will come in handy there. Christenings. <laughs> <laughs> Love christenings. The well-appointed house. Well, we're all right on appointments. I borrowed Katie's silver candlesticks and Peavy's picture of Washington crossing the Delaware. <laughs> Formal dinners. Here we are. Oh, Bertie! You call me, Miss Gilsey? Yes, Bertie. Uh, everything coming along all right out in the kitchen? Yes, sir. But I couldn't get that standing rib roast you wanted. Oh? No standing ribs, eh? So I settled for a rump roast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... I hope that's okay. Yeah, rump roast is fine ordinarily, Bertie, but for a formal-type dinner like this, certain meats are prescribed. Yes, sir. For instance, uh, Emily Post recommends rack of lamb. Lamb, huh? Mm-hmm. Mr. Gillsleeve, which part is the rack? <laughs> well, uh, the rack is, um, it's the part that, um... <clears throat> Bertie, why don't you take the rump roast back and talk to the butcher about that, huh? Well, Bertie's got a lot to do, but I guess she can do that, too. Yeah, fine, Bertie. We want to observe all the little niceties prescribed for such an occasion, don't we? What other little niceties have you got in mind, Mr. Gillsleeve? <laughs> 
Now, we might just refresh ourselves on a few things here, <laughs> both of us. Uh, for instance, Emily Poe says when you clear the table for dessert... I'll take care of clearing the table, Mr. Gillsleeve. Birdie knows how to load it, and she knows how to unload it. <laughs> Miss Emily Post may know all about them little niceties, but when all is said and done, Birdie gets to dinner. Oh, yes, I know that, It's Birdie. up to Birdie. Miss Emily Post may know how to serve it, but when all is said and done, it's up to Birdie. Now, Birdie... <laughs> Miss Emily Post can write all the books she wants to, but when all is said and done... You know who it's up to, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yes, Birdie. That's right, it's up to Birdie. <laughs> Uh, uh, better put Emily Post away and go over to Judge Hooker's. From now on, it's up to Bertie. <laughs> well, the judge's shrubbery needs pruning. Wonder why the old goat doesn't come out and nibble it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that <laughs> yeah, You can hardly see the picket fence <clears throat> What a way to keep a gate closed Tied with rope <clears throat> Sounds like inner sanctum <laughs> yeah, The judge will want to come over and meet the Thompsons tonight But I'm not going to invite him Besides, he'd hog the conversation. Oh, what a doorbell. <laughs> you probably want me to have a cup of tea. I can hear him just now. Well, come in, Gildy. I was just brewing a pot of tea. Well, come in, Gildy. I was just brewing a pot of tea. <laughs> I knew it. What? Nothing, Horace. I only have a minute. So oh, you just... want the movie projector, don't you, Gildy? That's right, Judge. Very kind of you to lend it to me. Not at all, old friend. I have it right here. Showing home movies is an ideal way to entertain friends for an evening. Huh? Are you having anyone other than Bronco's family, Gildy? No, Horace. I'm just returning an obligation. Of course. I've never had the pleasure of meeting Marjorie's future in-laws. <laughs> well, they're pretty cultured people, Judge. Just the type I feel most at home with. <laughs> Sorry, Judge, but you know our dining room suit has only six chairs. Oh. Well, there's Mr. and Mrs. Thompson, Bronco and Marjorie. That's four. Leroy and you. That's six, Judge. Six. But it's not the kind of a dinner where you can just drag up a piano stool and pitch in. Oh, of course not. <laughs> but in such a case, serving buffet style is in good Emily Post tradition. Ah, uh, well, Emily Post is not in charge tonight. It's up to Bertie. <laughs> If you'll just let me have your little projector. Oh, yes, Gildy. Have you ever operated one of these machines? No, but I'll get the hang of it, Judge. It just occurred to me that since you're using my projector, perhaps I should join the party and operate the machine for you. Oh, my goodness, Judge. Come on over after dinner and meet the Thompsons if you must. Oh, thank you. My, I never battled so hard to get an invitation, but I won. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known better than to lock horns with an old goat. <laughs> but remember, after dinner, Judge. <laughs> well, it's so nice having our two families together at dinner, isn't it, Auntie? Oh, yes, indeed, Margie. I've been wanting to pay Mr. and Mrs. Thompson back ever since they had us over at their house. <laughs> the roast was wonderful, Gildersleeve. I enjoy a good rump roast. Well, uh, we were going to have rack of lamb, but they ran out of racks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Would anybody care for another helping of chocolate mousse? I would. Sit down, Leroy. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, uh, fine, Mr. Thompson. I'll have Bertie bring it right in. Bertie! Uh, no more moose, thank you. <laughs> oh? I'm afraid Edward was still talking about the roast, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh. Did you call me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, yes, Bertie. I thought perhaps somebody would like more of the moose. Uh, how about you, Mrs. Thompson? Oh, good heavens, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. One must watch one's figure, you know. Well, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. You have a very girlish figure for your age. <laughs> Thank you. 
No more moose, then? Uh, hmm? oh, Bronco? Oh, no thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, guess not, Bertie. Nobody else wants any, what? <laughs> I'm sitting down. Growing boy. <laughs> Uh, Birdie, I must tell you how very much we enjoyed your delightful dinner. It was simply delicious. Well, thank you, ma'am. Yes, Birdie, wonderful. Excellent. Uh, don't you agree, Martha? I just said so, Edward. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> all of us enjoy Birdie's cooking. You're all nice to say that. Today, when Mr. Gillsleeve started waving Emily Post at me, I said, Emily Post can write all the books she wants to. Oh. And when all said and done, it's up to Birdie. <laughs> So we adjourn to the living room for black coffee. Ah, oh, grand coffee, Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Care for a third cup, Mr. Thompson? <laughs> uh, no, thanks. Oh. What uh, happened to the uh, young lovers? Marjorie and Bronco went for a walk. Lucky them. Nice and quiet in here. Yes, since Judge Hooker went for a drink of water. Uh, yes, indeed. Quiet. As I was saying, Mr. Thompson, I made no secret of my desire to make your acquaintance this evening. I insisted on coming. Oh, I see. <laughs> the judge is an old family friend, Mr. Thompson. Lawyer. I understand you are interested in first editions. Well, I once saw a first edition of Poor Richard's Almanac, and it seems to me... Excuse me, Miss Thompson. Yes, Bertie? You admired my dinner so much, I thought you'd like one of my personal recipes, and I wrote it down for you. Oh, how thoughtful. Isn't it, Edward? What? Oh, oh, excellent, delicious dinner. <laughs> and it seems to me that Benjamin Franklin should have used... I call it Bertie's potluck cake. <laughs> yeah, all right, Bertie. Bertie, she can read it later. Yes, sir. And it seems to me, Mr. Thompson, that Franklin's poor Richard... You tried, Miss Thompson. Let me know how you make out. <laughs> Thank you, Bertie. Getting back to poor Richard's almanac... Uh, Judge, you and Bertie are hogging the conversation. Oh, well, when does the feature film start? Uh, yes, let's uh, see the home movies, Gildersleeve. Well, uh, Leroy built such a big fire, I'm afraid it's too bright in here at the moment. Uh, so while we're waiting, Leroy might entertain us by playing a piece on the piano. Uh, Leroy? Does Leroy play? Well, I love good music. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Leroy. Okay. I will now play a little Tchaikovsky. The boy loves Tchaikovsky. Do you hear that, Edward? Isn't it marvelous? Huh? Oh, yes, delightful dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he hits that C sharp. C sharp, Leroy. <laughs> yeah, I'll start over. Six years he's been making the same mistake. Zeke. I'll get it this time. He's nervous, I guess, folks. Never mind, Leroy. Pour some water on the fire and we'll have the movies. <laughs> Now, this reel gets a little technical, folks. I call it the story behind your faucet. Now watch. You know what that is? That's a close-up of a snifter valve. We use those at the water department. And there's a shot of me at my desk. I took that myself. That's why you can't see anything but my feet. <laughs> now, that's a view of the big ridge dam. Now, look over there at the left. Where the trees are. Oop, it's gone. Anyway, that was the pump house. <laughs> uh, uh, I took more movies of the waterworks than I thought. <laughs> but everybody seems fascinated. <laughs> That's a girl walking along there. I don't know who it is. She was hitchhiking on the road to Ridge Falls. There's a good view now, but it's blurred. Somebody walked in front of the camera. <laughs> I think it was Jesse Campbell. The excavation you see right now is they were laying some new pipe. 
And right there you see a piece of the pipe It's behind the log <laughs> Now here's the water tank Full of water With the sun going down behind it Kind of dramatic Well, I guess that's all It was a very interesting trip <laughs> Turn on the lights, Leroy Okay Well, how'd everybody like the movies? Oh, for, they're all asleep Yeah, I woke up just in time <laughs> What an evening Gildersleeve, you're a big flop You've disgraced little Marjorie Hey, Mr. Thompson's waking up yeah, I've never been so embarrassed in my life Martha, turn over on your side You're snoring again <laughs> Heavens, was I asleep? Well, you just dozed off for a second. <laughs> Edward, well, wake uh, up, wake uh, up. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Mm. <laughs> Pretty warm in here, of course. Big dinner, too. Oh, dear. Mr. Gildersleeve, can you ever forgive us? Huh? I've never been so embarrassed in my life. How could we have done such a thing? Well, these things happen. Don't you give it a thought. <laughs> Edward! <laughs> For heaven's sake. Oh, yes, delicious dinner. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you must think we're terrible. Now, now, Mother, it's all right. Oh, we've disgraced our poor Bronco. No, you haven't. Dry your tears, Mother. <laughs> Who cares? It's all in the family. <laughs> Kick the judge, Leroy. <laughs> We'll return to the great Gildersleeve very shortly. When you're shopping tomorrow, remember to add something rich and delicately different to your family diet. Get Pabstet, the pasteurized processed cheese food that has that real cheddar flavor. Get golden or pimento Pabstet in the familiar round package. Better yet, save money by buying the economical two-pound loaf. Then watch your family tear into this delicately different cheddar cheese food. Get Pabstet tomorrow. Well, good night, Mrs. Thompson Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve It was a lovely evening, really Oh, yes, lovely evening Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve I'm Leroy Oh, yes <laughs> Leroy I enjoyed your singing very much Did I sing? <laughs> Leroy played the piano, Mr. Thompson Oh, oh, well, he's a very talented boy Oh, dear Edward, come get in the car no. You ought to be careful driving home, Mr. Thompson Oh, Mrs. Thompson drives I merely sit behind the wheel <laughs> Well, take it easy, folks Good night, Bronco Good night, Mr. Gillersleeve Good night, Marge Good night, Bronco uh, See you all soon Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Be careful Oh, brother, what a family. No chance of Mr. Thompson going to sleep at the wheel, though. I'll bet Martha gives him an earful on the way home. Edward! <laughs> <laughs> By the way, let's everybody kind of watch it when we're driving these days. Winter months make driving pretty tricky, what with slippery streets and all. Drive carefully, folks. Take your time. Don't be the cause of an accident. The person in it may be you or me. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on NBC.